Well, we want to know, we wanted to find out how much DU was being manufactured in the U.S. because we suspected the, the U.S. was using a lot more. Now, um, one of the Japanese physicists who came to our Hamburg conference calculated that 800 tons of depleted uranium, re if it's released into the air, is the atomicity equivalent or the equivalent number of radioactive atoms as 41,000 Nagasaki bombs. We have released over a quarter of a million Nagasaki bombs equivalent radiation into our atmosphere. But what's even more alarming is um, that the McAllister Bomb Factory in Oklahoma, McAllister, Oklahoma, was applying for relicensing uh, at the NRC in order to be able to continue manufacturing DU weapons. And in order to maintain level one status, which they have to do to get relicensed, they must be able to ship 1,600 tons of depleted uranium weapons a day. That's, that's 166,000 Nagasaki bombs of radiation. It's 20 train car loads of DU going out of that factory every day. It's only one of four U.S. Army bomb factories. And all together, at all four bomb factories at any one time, they are allowed by the NRC to have up to 44,000 tons of DU on site. That's four and a half million Nagasaki bombs. And what has happened to our soldiers, as you heard from Dennis, is that they've been devastated. Um, in August of, last August, in August of 2004, Terry Jemison at the Department of Veterans Affairs told the American Free Press that 518,739 Gulf era veterans are now on medical disability. In that same 14 year period, 7,035 were reported wounded in Iraq. Something is terribly wrong. These soldiers brought the depleted uranium home in their bodies, in their duffel bags, in, in their semen. They internally contaminated their wives and partners. The birth defects, which the VA investigated in a group of 251 soldiers in Mississippi, were deemed to be very, very serious in 67% of the babies born after the war and the, um, the soldiers' exposure. They were born with legs missing, arms missing, brains missing, eyes missing, organs missing, or horrible blood diseases. You can go to the live photo essay on the internet. It's called The Tiny Victims of Desert Storm. And you can see these babies born with birth defects with their families and with the children who are normal born before the Iraq War. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's terrible. And the Pentagon absolutely hates that cover story. <laughs> I have newspaper ads that we paid for in the Washington Post before the February 2003, 2003 demonstrations. And they've disappeared from my papers. They come in my apartment and take documents all the time. So if anybody has that ad, I'd like to have it. Um, the damage to the brains of the soldiers is also very, very sad. Um, the, these nanoparticles of depleted uranium go, when they inhale through the nose, go through the olfactory bulb straight into the brain. It damages the impulse control and increases violence in the soldiers. Um, the University of Texas has been studying the brain damage to these soldiers and doing wonderful, wonderful studies, but uh, with terrible, um, terrible uh, understanding of, of the impact of depleted uranium. And a few years ago, after Afghanistan, the war there, 
four soldiers came back to Fort Bragg and within two months four had murdered their wives. Um, these uh, nano-sized particles, this is a, a chart from the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics which shows that the nano-sized particles of GU, which are a tenth of a micron and smaller, form at very high temperatures. They're round, shiny, hollow Christmas tree balls because I have a 1979 report from Battelle Northwest Labs with the photos in them. And um, this study was done for the U.S. Army. It was distributed to five pages of uh, people in the Pentagon. And of course, they buried the report. And Battelle um, finally published it 20 years later in 1999. Um, these tiny particles, nanoparticles, have a separate effect from the chemical effect and the radiation effect. In a study on fish exposed to nanoparticles reported by Jim Thomas in The Ecologist, buckyballs cause brain damage and genetic changes in fish. Professor Gunter Oberdorster at the University of Rochester Department of Environmental Medicine reported the Teflon particles that were 0.13 microns in diameter, that's the size of a virus, caused no ill effects in mice. But when mice were exposed to nanoparticles, 0 0.02 microns in diameter, for just 15 minutes, nearly all the mice were dead within four hours. So you can see what a terrible effect these tiny particles have had. This is cancer. This is a cancer, and this is what normal tissue and, and blood veins look like. Cancer is just the tip of the iceberg. But in 20 soldiers who served in 2003 in Iraq, 16 months later, eight of them had malignancies. Soldiers who served in Bradley fighting, fighting vehicles where they sit on the ammunition boxes came back with rectal cancer, the one sitting on the DU munitions. Um, the the signal and signaling mechanisms between cells that um, make life possible and help cells collaborate and cooperate in a syncopated dance uh, are damaged. These are the, this is a cell. The um, alpha particle from a depleted uranium uh, decay uh, can travel through a cell. This is the nucleus right here. It can hit the nucleus and damage the DNA, or it can miss it, but it is going to damage the signaling mechanisms and make 80 or 90 cells around it go haywire. The other thing that can happen is that in the cell, there are mitochondria, which are little jelly bean things. This is what nerves look like in the brain. And the signal comes down the, the nerve and then has to jump that gap. It's called the nerve synapse. And these little jelly bean things are the mitochondria that give it energy to make that jump. When the mitochondria are dysfunctional, the um, nerves do not signal properly and it causes neuromuscular, neurological, and uh, other problems. And some of the diseases these soldiers have, especially in the Air Force and the Army, they are the biggest users of DU, they're coming down with Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's disease, Hodgkin's disease, chronic fatigue syndrome. This is all from mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, also, soccer and football players have an epidemic of Hodgkin's disease and Lou Gehrig's disease. And what I believe this is caused by is the, um, the uranium in the phosphate fertilizers in combination with the chemicals and the pesticides. And the soldiers who, I'm sorry, the football players who are on the ground more have higher rates of these diseases. The first soldier to ever win a lawsuit uh, for depleted uranium exposure and birth defects in his children was Kenny Duncan in Scotland. He won his lawsuit after eight years in the courts on appeal because he was in this independent study in Germany 
by independent scientists.